This is part two of the simple patchwork placemats. And what I'm doing now is I have stitched the first row of squares together and I'm pressing the seams open. And sometimes they're a little bit difficult to get open when they're small, like a quarter inch. You just want them to lie flat so that when you stitch the next row to this row, you can line up not your seam allowances, but the actual gap between them, um, the line between the two different squares. You need to line that up with the same line or space or um, seam area on the next row. You don't want to have your iron too hot because you don't want to scorch the fabric. But those are now pressed open. You can see the size difference between the top row, which has been stitched, and the seams, the seam allowance is pressed open, and the next row, which has not been stitched yet. And so this is going to be a smaller placemat. What I need them for is really just to put a hot plate on. Um, if you'd like a more traditional full-size placemat, you would definitely want to add at least one more row of four squares and have it five squares by five squares or usually, unless you want a square placemat, you would then go to six squares wide and five squares top to bottom. And again, my purpose is to train my eye to keep this fabric edge completely lined up with the right side of the general presser foot on the machine. So I've, I'm starting to piece the second row. These are the first two squares in the second row. You can go slow at first. My problem was that I tend to, I know I know how to do this, so I tend to go too fast and I wasn't taking the care that I needed to take. So there is a quarter inch seam allowance on these squares. And now when I piece the next square in the row, it'll be the same thing. So I'm retraining my eye to line up the fabric always with the right side of the presser foot. Now here are the first two rows ready to be pieced together. And I'll just open them up like that. And there are two rows obviously where the blocks are opposite. And you might be able to tell that it looks like even though I was careful, a couple of them are going to be slightly off. Now again, I didn't cut these with a rotary cutter. I cut these with scissors. So this is the challenge of piecing. So I've taken the top row and placed it right sides together on top of the bottom row. And I'm going to use um, long quilting pens and I'm going to line up those two areas of the seam allowance as I said. There's another method of piecing where you actually press one seam allowance going one way and the other going the other way because they would naturally line up. 
and I've done that in the past but I find that if my blocks are off at all that's not necessarily going to happen now what I'm doing is pinning at each seam straight through both fabrics and when I stitch this I will maybe have to um, adjust the fabric a little bit in other words because these are just slightly off anyway now this one's off oh it's almost hard to tell with the, the plaid um, when they're off slightly anyway you sometimes have to pull one row and let the other row sit flat as you're sewing so if they're they're off a little bit you may have to pull one row or the other if you're not going um, to remove the pins even if you do remove the pins this is the care it takes of piecing that when I get these lined up and I have them pinned and I go to stitch this probably even if they're off a tiny bit there is going to be a little bit of a pucker in the fabric in one place or another and as you're stitching when you see that you'll either pull the top layer or the bottom layer so that you're fitting one row to the other row is really what you're doing you're fitting the two rows together but you have to do it while you're sewing and one disadvantage to modern machines is that they're fast so you have to be able to do this as the machine is going so there are the two rows pinned together and now I will show you what I mean by fitting the two rows together let me just get that where it needs to be and I'll bring the camera over here now for example if you look at the fabric this way right here the bottom plaid square has more of a gap than the upper see that than the upper square so when I get to that point this is when I would choose to leave the pins in and I happen to wear glasses but safety glasses are very inexpensive they're only about five dollars and they're not an unheard of idea when sewing because if you don't wear glasses like I do um, if the needle hits a pin if a pin breaks if the needle breaks you can have pieces of metal flying around So let's put the camera over here I think that's the easiest view and I will show you as I ease one fabric into the other okay so now I know the the first block is is set and these two blocks the next two are not too far off but if they were a little bit far off I can pull from the back and the front holding it at the pin right here at the next pin to make sure that those line up um, correctly and whatever extra fabric is on either square will ease right in to the stitching But you have to do that at the same time that you're keeping the fabric completely lined up with the right side of the presser foot. And I go slowly over pins if I leave them in the work. Now this next, these two are fairly lined up. But where I am now are the two squares that were off, and there's quite a bit of fabric on the bottom square. Um, and I, what I want are the points of the seam to line up. <laughs> 
especially with that plaid fabric, that will not be noticeable at all if there's a little bit more fullness in the block. Ideally, you cut all your squares so accurately that this doesn't happen. So now, I'm going to do what I just said, and as it starts to stitch, I'm going to pull both on the front and the back, and hope that I ease that in without ending up with um, like a tuck or a, a ridge right at the seam. Now one other habit that I sometimes get into is letting go of the last block. And you really shouldn't because that's um, going to leave you with edges that are all off a little bit. So try to hold on to that last block. See, and th now that one, because I had to let it go, is actually off a little bit. Not much, but it's enough to make a difference when you put a whole project together. Can you, can you see how that's just a little bit narrower at the end? So in that case, I go back. The fabric now is going to be held together. I line up the needle with an area that is correct. I go back about an inch, an inch and a quarter. and do it again. Now when I go to press that seam allowance open, that's going to um, not open quite as much as the others, but it's better to have a straight seam allowance. So let's unpin this and see how well it came out. Now this is the same care that I was taking and have been taking in hand piecing. It's just the actual stitching is done by hand instead of by machine. So you can see there, they're still off by less than a sixteenth of an inch. Um, that one's not off. That one's not off. And this is the block that had a little bit of fullness. But once I press that out, and actually once you quilt this or use it as a placemat, the fabric eases into the stitching anyway. But there's another example of the size difference I'm going to have. And I did have a ruler, but I don't have one right, right here now. Um, I think this is 8 inches. Eight. That's about 13 inches wide, and um, 5 times 3 would be 15, and that's about right, maybe just under 13 inches wide is what I'm going to end up with. So again, if you want larger placemats, add a row each way, and do 6 by 5 instead of 5 by 4. But this takes you through the piecing and the piecing of the rows. And what I'm going to do now is I'll finish piecing the two top pieces. And in part three, we'll talk about quilting them. Here's another reason why I like patchwork. As you can see, I have one placemat um, piece together over there. And I'm about to start the second one. And I started to look through my fabrics to see what I have for a backing. And I have black wool. I found five yards of black wool. Um, so I can use that black if I want to. But then I thought, well, since these fabrics are kind of wild looking anyway, why not go with this fabric? Because this is a fabric that my mother had that she was going to make a dress or a shawl or something out of. And I am not going to make a dress out of it. But, I do want to make an apron out of it. I'm thinking of making an apron out of this fabric, and I need a yard and three quarters to make the apron. And if I have enough fabric left over from the apron, I can use this to back the placemats. And that 
the reason I'm mentioning all of this now is because that is the beauty of patchwork because what I could also do is I probably have some scrap purple or scrap red or or I have the black I could actually make a patchwork back to these placemats if I wanted to and make them double sided and then when the quilting is done you just have to make sure that your corners all line up front to back so it's a little bit more involved as far as taking care but if I have uh, scrap pieces of this, this left over after I make the apron if they're not large enough to cut one full back piece for each pla placemat they'll be definitely large enough to cut three inch squares from and again this is why I like patchwork because you don't have to constantly be going out buying fabric um, knowing that you need at least two yards or three yards or four yards when you see something my mother picked this up somewhere it's 60 inches wide um, and a yard and three quarters so she must have seen it it wasn't with a pattern or anything so I think she just saw it and liked it and bought it and um, that tends to be how I buy fabric too most of the time is if I see something I like I buy it because I know I do patchwork piecing